Hey, Malama! It is London calling via New Zealand. Hello, Robin. Hey. <laughs> you are up early. I am up late. We were just enjoying Melody Festival in semi final three. Martin Almgren and Jessica Anderson have advanced to the final. We need to talk about it. Are you ready? Ooh, let's, let's do, do this. this. That is right. Seven sang, three have been sent home, and four live to sing another day. Let's take this in order, starting with Martin Almgren, his song A Bitter Lullaby. Now, despite the title, I thought it was quite uplifting. It's got a, not a dated sound, a kind of vintage sound. It, I could have heard this on the radio in the late 90s. It's not a bad thing, per se. It's very Christian rock festival, which is not necessarily my genre, but clearly many people do like it. He's got a great voice, very deep, very resonant, and he contrasted that with those high-pitched female backing vocalists. So that, and it worked, actually. That was a quite nice touch. Simple lights, giving me weird Jesus vibes. Sorry, I keep making this religious, <laughs> but something about this seemed just religious. I don't know why. Um, but I think his voice pulled him through. The song, take it or leave it for me, but the man can sing. Yeah, he's really popular. He won the um, Swedish Idol a couple of years ago, and he has a really good voice. And this song is exactly the kind of song that he sings well. So as far as, you know, someone getting up on stage and giving a good performance, he's definitely, like, you can sort of see that he and um, Jessica Anderson did that. They did what they do really well. And he really deserved that place in the final. But yeah, the song itself, it's, it's not the kind of song that I would personally be into, but I can totally think, I can totally see that if you like that kind of music, yeah. you'd be totally after him. And I also think he's, he's a popular singer. He's going to have people who just love him as a person. You know, he was a really popular contestant on Idol and his talent just adds to that. So yeah, he was a very expected um, pop player. Well said. Now, last night during the Melfest audience poll, he was one of the top two. But this next contestant, she was not in the top two, Jessica Anderson, or as we're now saying, Jessica Anderson. <laughs> she, of course, is a schlager diva of yesteryear, and with this song, Party Voice, it's her new style. She's trying to be more modern and contemporary. I'm not sure if she achieved more modern and contemporary, but I did enjoy this. Um, it, it's fun. It, it does feel a little, not al Kazari, but, you know, of that ilk, like that schlager that hasn't done so well at Eurovision recently. Maybe she's kind of flying the banner. She's taking it back to the final. She talks about dancing like a mother, and you shared a very <laughs> funny gif inside the, our group chat. You know, it's a very strange <laughs> lyric because she is of a certain age. And like, I'm approaching that age too, so I'm not hating. But, <laughs> but it's just a funny lyric. And then also mm -hmm. she talks about hearing her party voice, but I just heard a lot of backing. Like they need to turn that down. Jessica can sing. We know that from Can't Hurt Me Now. The woman can sing. She doesn't need all that backing. I'd love this to be a bit more pure while keeping that electro edge. Yeah, I'm going to say the gif was um, mom jeans dot, dot gif. Um, it's from the <laughs> notorious Saturday Night Live mom jeans sketch to the relief, like Tina Fey dancing in the mom jeans and that's what the lyric reminded me of I know it's sort of meant to be implying dance like an MF but um <laughs> there is a, where when you are a woman of a certain age there is another kind of mother that you can be so but it's kind of cool like I, I like the double meaning kind of coming into the song um that sometimes like women of a certain age and I count myself as that obviously um sometimes you just want to hold it loose <laughs> So, you know, she's doing it. She's doing it really well. She's got a good voice. She can entertain. And um, I, I like her coming up with something that's um, upbeat, that's a dance song. Um, it was an awkward semi final, and she definitely um, gave, I'd say, the most entertaining song of the semi, and she really deserved her place in the final. She did. Oh, and as, as they've noticed, she's. The She's the first woman. Sorry, she is the first woman to have directly qualified for the final so far this year. So Thank goodness. That, yeah, yeah. Testimony to her talent. Oh, she stopped that sausage party from rolling on. She also <laughs> looks like Heidi Montag. I don't know if you know her from like the hills. Yeah, they're, they're like twins. She could be her mother. She could dance like a mother too. <laughs> 
In any event, we move on to the first Andres Chanson qualifier, and that is Moncho with the song Cuba Libra. Now, I'm pretty sure his stage director stylist had a few Cuba Libras when designing this because it was very <laughs> chaotic, random conga lines, women with flowers in their hair, mismatched colors. And yet, for me, it worked. It was trying to stay true to that drunken night in Ibiza with sticky floors feeling, which all of you know so well. So it was true to that. It was fun. And it actually woke me up because he came after Martin Almgren and then whoever sang second, and uh, Barbie, I think. And then he jolted me <laughs> yeah. to life. Um, so I, yeah, th this is a likable song. It's very likable, and it deserves to be on some summer playlist. Yeah, he's a he's a new performer, well, new to Melfest. And yeah, he just, he gave a good performance. Like, it definitely wasn't the the best, one of, one of the best songs of this year. Um, and it's, you know, we've, we've been saying this, there are so many sort of cool Latino groovy beats yeah. that are showing up in national finals this year. And that's sort of another one of that genre. But it was it was fun. It was fun. And he um, gave a good performance. And it's sort of like, would I want to party with this guy? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> and that's, that's the kind of, I would like to also like to party with Jessica Anderson. Um, that's, I think, the sort of thing that makes people want to vote. And um yeah, it, it like I wouldn't be surprised if if um, Cuba Libra and Every Day, the next one we'll be talking about, end up going head to head in Andre Chanson. Um, but on the other hand, I wouldn't be surprised if this did end up in the final because it is a really fun song. It's great. I like the raw quality of the performance. It's not polished, and I think that's part of its strength. In any event, we move on to Mendez. He, of course, competed at Melody Festival in ages ago, finishing second, I believe. He almost won back in the day. Um, yeah, at first, I was, like, cringe. I thought it was so cringe. It was like your drunk, your best friend's drunk dad at the barbecue who's been a little too friendly, and he's like, come on, let's have some fun. But then you realize he's just had too many drinks, and he actually does want to have fun. Um, and then the chorus hits and all those dancers come out in their bright kind of billowing and beautiful gowns, caftans, whatever you call them, and the party starts. It's very cliche. He even says mi corazon. I mean, hello, Adeline Norway, <laughs> Bombo, any kind of Latin tinge song you've ever heard. But it, again, it worked because it was fun and that made it, it was memorable, the colors, his delivery. I'm not sure he's the best singer out there because in those verses, he's very exposed. And I was like, uh, daddy's voice has not improved since we last heard him. But I was glad that he stayed alive in the competition because this is a track. Would I download this? Yeah, I think I would download this track. It's very summery and feel good. And in this somewhat dire competition this year, we need songs like this. <laughs> The beginning of the song, it just sounded pretty bad. Like his vocals were, they sounded quite off. And I was just thinking, oh God, is this going to be another bad one? But it really picks up. Like once the chorus kicks in, and okay, he's getting a lot of help from backing singers. But once the chorus came in, all the, the dancers arrived, it really picks up. And it was a real, the, the perfect song to end the show. Um, yeah, it, it is a little bit surprising that he was tipped as a potential um, finalist. But um, I can also see why the other two would have um, been stronger candidates tonight. Um, yeah, it, it's a fun song. Like like I said, it, it is a bit quite similar to Cuba Libra as far as just the overall selection of Melfest this year. We might only see one of them in the final. But um, – yeah, like let's have a <laughs> let's have a party. <laughs> let's do this. And speaking of party, we head to a barn stomping barn stomping farmyard party with Calais Moreas and Orsa Spellman with Mindrom. I think this was trying to celebrate old school traditional Swedish hoedowns. Um, but in that celebration, it almost felt like it was mocking it, like the very cheap green arches, the very, it just felt a little cheap. And I think if you're going to do it and celebrate it, you need to, I don't know, put more effort into it. They were great. They have great voices. They're very sweet. They're very endearing. It's just the staging looked like plastic furniture. Like you go to a garden store and be like, oh, I'm going to have a kitsch party. It felt very <laughs> kitsch as opposed to traditional. Um very pleasant, very nice. You know, if they had advanced to Andre Chanson, I wouldn't have been upset because it's variety. Like, we kind of had two Latin-themed 
songs in Mancho and Mendez, and this is like so out there for us, very Hasse Anderson. Um, although I am relieved it didn't go to the final because I don't think it's actually quality and I don't think it would have any shot at winning and I think it would just be taking up space. But well done to them for giving us a different demographic and uh, exposing us to kind of rural sweeping. There's always going to be songs like this in Melfest. There are these sort of cultural touchstones they, they like to have and, you know, a song like this is going to come in. And I sort of think... It, it might it that was probably in the lineup as a bit of a disposable entry like you know it's just going to be there so that SVT can be like yes we support with traditional Swedish <laughs> music but um yeah I was surprised that it was uh, fifth um, you know it was one of the ones where it's like oh has it actually qualified or will it be going to Andrew Shanson but um, yeah I guess it did what it did really well um, you know color is a really good established performer and I think quite well loved as well um but yeah they, those the archers they were pretty they were pretty cheap yeah it was very target b and q pick your home store I just yeah in any mm-hmm. event <laughs> we move on <laughs> now this was the surprise of the evening for many doter who was the pre-contest favorite or rather the pre-semi favorite crashed out sixth place with her song Cry. She had drawn comparisons to Lorene because of her intimate staging. It's all black. She's dancing in a spotlight, forming shapes, using her silhouette and her hair. I thought it was quite artistic. The song was very stripped back, very stripped back, very minimalist. And for me, it worked. However, I could see why this would alienate so many people because it's not an obvious pop song, although it does have not a dirty pop. It does have a contemporary pop vibe to it. This is a hard song to situate. And I think the problem here is not necessarily the song, but maybe the fit with the contest. Perhaps people are just in that party voice mood. And this, in a way, is a downer. And I think if you're going to have an emotional song, it needs to be really, really emotional. Like Carolina Alf- Oglas, Alglas a few years ago, Schnella, Schnella, Schnella that created a mood. I don't know if this created as powerful of a mood, but I think she's one of her many new fans, Doder, and hopefully she'll come back. I would have put this direct to the final, but clearly this is not what Sweden was feeling. Yeah, people have compared it to um, Issues by Julia Michaels, which was a huge hit last year. That kind of minimalist, um, emotional sort of song. But for whatever reason, it, it didn't quite come across. I think her... The staging, um, we heard that they were making some changes. The original staging had a lot of really fast cuts and she wasn't making the camera cues, so they sort of toned it down a bit. But it, I think it wasn't it wasn't quite working. The, the camera wasn't connecting with her. There was something going on like that. I also saw a comment um, on Weebly Blogs from someone who was involved with the audience poll last night, and he said, when they were asking people what their favourite songs were, they were saying, "Um, I like Cry, but it's not a Melfest song. So that that is a kind of a thing. Like people were acknowledging that it was a quality song, but they just Mm. didn't think it was suitable for Melfest or Eurovision, whereas it actually might be. It it might be a, a missed opportunity. Like it was definitely what we kept hearing is it, lots of people were expecting it to be in the final. It was tipped as one of the potential winners. So I think there'll be a lot of disappointed people tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm reading our comments section on weeweeblugs.com. There are some disappointed (laughs) people. And speaking of disappointment, we turn to Barbie Escobar with Stark. Her expression when she was eliminated, we tweeted it out. She was not happy. This performance was a bit of a mess. I'm not sure the song worked. I'm not sure the staging worked with the song, and I'm not sure the performer worked with the staging or the song. So in short, I just don't think this worked. There was a sultry, mysterious vibe, the red and the black. I mean, she appeared to have rolled up on stage in her street clothes. Like, she's like, I'm gonna drop the kids, and I'm gonna go to Melfest. It just... It didn't feel stage ready. Her dancers doing all those squats, I found it very uncomfortable. Like my hamstrings started to hurt. And musically, (laughs) like someone compared her on Twitter, compared her to a cat like being murdered. There was something very shrieky at times in the vocal, but I think that may have been how the song was written because she can sing, but on this track, it just, it was jarring and grating. And yeah, it's a shame because she's a beautiful person. She's really spunky and fun. We have an interview with her, Kevin did with her on weeblogs.com. So I hope she comes back with a different tune that fits her better because this just didn't work. 
I quite like the song. Um, it was like nice and contemporary, had a had a good feel to it. Um, but yeah, I think it was sort of let down a lot by the staging. It just wasn't quite working. And it also had um, a, a pop drop in it. So there was that big section where it was just dancing and then she'd, she'd sort of throw in a few lines, but mostly uh, instrumental. So songs like that, there is a risk when the singer isn't singing that the audience will lose connection. And I think that might have been what happened here. Um, I hope she comes back with a, like a, if not next year, then some other time with a, another song, because she is definitely a really good singer and would be an asset to Melfest. Absolutely. <laughs> Barbie is always an asset. Get her a Ken doll and we are good to go. <laughs> In any case, that is what we're thinking. What are you thinking? Are you happy with the two acts who went direct till final? Are you happy with the Andre Shonson acts? Who would you have sent through? And who do you think won of those top two? Did Martin slay Jessica? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. And don't forget to like and leave a comment below. And we will see you later. Bye! Bye! -bye.